Hi, today we're going to discuss about digestive system as a physiological principles. So here we want to understand the digestive system, which is corresponds, uh, responsible for, for breaking down of food into its molecular components for our use in absorption of nutrients into our body. So first we'll discuss layered structure in intestinal tract tract or tubes, and our stomach and pancreas and liver and small and large intestine and fluid balance in the body. Let's first uh, understand, uh, think about gastrointestinal tract. Gastro means uh, stomach, so gastrointestinal tract is about from the mouth to the anus. So that is uh, 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 responsible for our digestion. So here comes a little bit of anatomy, which uh, is important for you to know the basic terminologies. Um, so let's see from the mouth, uh, from the oral cavity, and where we have the uh, food uh, intake, then it will go down through this esophagus. So esophagus is a long lining up until it meets a stomach. So stomach uh, stays right underneath your diaphragm, which encloses your lungs. So that stomach uh, is a little bit on the left side, and then it goes down into, uh, connected to a small intestine called here duodenum. And here in duodenum, there, um, there are these organ called the liver, which is a, a very big organ right underneath your right hand side of uh, the rib cage. And there is also a gallbladder which secretes bile salts and bile acids uh, that secretes it into your intestine. And also right underneath the stomach, there exists a pancreas, which is a floppy organ. So when you do an um, uh, anatomy with a uh, rodent, it's sometimes hard to find what is pancreas, pancreas because it's so floppy. And, and that, enters into the small intestine. The small intestine, the, <clears throat> the top part is called duodenum, and the middle part is jejunum, and the last part is called the ileum. So that composes small intestine, and that enters into a cecum, which is a uh, part of large intestine starts, and there is appendix connected. <clears throat> and the large intestine is starting from your right side, and it starts to go up. So it's called ascending colon, and then it goes tra <clears throat> traverse to the, uh, this way. So it's called transverse colon, and then later on it goes down again. So that's uh, a descending colon and connected to the rectum and anus. So um, when you, uh, you can think of this as a, a clock to attaching on your belly, then the ways it rotates, this clockwise direction is how the colon uh, uh, goes. So this may help your um, you know, digestion too. So let's see. So first, gastrointestinal tract. And what is the function of this digestive system? The first, uh, the solid food, or uh, uh, we need to break down the food into its molecular components. So that's first digestive action is one. And the other of this digestive system's function is a storage and for store the food uh, and controlled emptying and mixing and secretion uh, such as uh, enzymes uh, and digestion and absorption into our body. So let's <clears throat> take a look a little bit further. So uh, there exists a valve and this S, which is specialized region of smooth muscle to control the movement of intestinal contents. So from the mouth, and here is a esophagus, and there is a sphincter. Sphincter in Korean is guayakun, so it's kind of controlling the passage. So there is upper esophageal sphincter here. <clears throat> and also it goes down when it it touches to stomach, there is a lower esophageal sphincter. This lower esophageal sphincter is important because if it doesn't work, uh, that very acidic um, stomach 
acid can come into upper, which cause pain, and you probably remember a, a reflex, which sometimes are bad because it may cause a, a esophageal cancer. Uh, so, and then in stomach, and you can see stomach into the uh, small intestine, especially duodenum area, there exists a pyloric sphincter. And, and when it goes down to, through jejunum, ileum, and ileum to small and large intestine, large intestine contains a bacterial flora, and uh, small intestine doesn't want that. So there exists uh, this ileocecal sphincter, which prevents uh, a backward uh, reflex and prevents uh, bacteria uh, flora coming back into our small intestine and ascending colon and transverse colon, descending colon, and it goes to rectum. So, and in the rectum and anus, so um, for in the anus, there's a two types of sphincter, which is internal and external sphincter. Internal is uh, involuntary and external sphincter is uh, voluntary. So you can think of it when a person poops and defecate, sometimes it's in our own will, but sometimes when you're sick, sometimes you can see there's an accident. So digestive tract is uh, when um, in anatomy, so we can start from this you know, upper uh, esophagus until the anus, you can take it out and guess what, how long does it uh, uh, spend? So in fact, mouth to anus is very long. It actually is almost eight meters long. So that's amazing length. And there are a couple of glands, a salivary gland, esophageal sphincter, and pyloric sphincter, which connects uh, stomach and duodenum, ileocecal sphincter, ileum to colon, and internal and external anal sphincters. And this sphincter is not only in this big level, there's even microscopic sphincters exist. For example, our blood uh, distribution from the heart and its business end is each tissue that microscopic uh, blood vessel called the capillary. That's where this nutrient uh, and oxygen and CO2 exchange is happening by diffusion. And that little uh, capillary has to be also, um, uh, the flow has to be controlled. And so people discovered that uh, the name is called pre-capillary sphincter, which is at the front of the uh, capillary, there is a smooth muscle uh, uh, sphincter exists and it controls the blood vessel. Now I should say that the blood vessel itself is covered with the endothelial cell layer and outside the, the, there is a basement membrane. Also there is, exists a cell called the pericyte. And this is still controversy whether pericyte control this microscopic local blood flow or this up, uh, upstream such as arterial, there's a lot of smooth muscle, do they control all this precapillary sphincter? So this is still controversial and very interesting part of our research because people are curious about where at the bottom of this tissue and uh, capillary, which controls of blood flow, which uh, eventually uh, manages to uh, exchange of nutrients and oxygen with the cells uh, inside the tissue and our blood. 